We should never allow the government to decide what is acceptable speech and what is unacceptable speech. Um, we, should, we should penalize behaviors, not opinions, and not speech. Uh, if you start trying to regulate speech, you start trying to regulate um, thoughts, you start trying to regulate beliefs rather than behaviors, uh, there's no way that you're not going to abridge the constitutional rights of millions of Americans. This is the Pepsi that your father drank, and his father drank before he met your grandmother. This is the Pepsi for this model, and his mom. Hi, Cindy. Oh, hi, Brittany. Have you met Uncle Drew? This is the Pepsi that's back from the future, and back for one last ride. This is the first Pepsi on the moon. What? No. Fine. This is the Pepsi for moonwalkers. This is the Pepsi for every generation. And this is the Pepsi that brings you the Pepsi Super Bowl Halftime Show! Go get him, Justin! Well, this, so this video, video today is, is going to be, be about, about the idiot, idiot called, called Jim, Jim, Jimmy, Jimmy Fallon. Fallon. Uh, in, my in my book, he is, is a communist because, because, like all of the media, media and there, there are exceptions, exceptions to that, that. I'm, I'm talking, talking only two, two people, people make sense and have sanity in what they, they say. say in the media, and that is uh, Sean Hannity and uh, Rush Limbaugh. The rest of the media, and this is all the major networks, including the cable services for Fox and CNN and MSNBC, have been hypocritical of President Trump since the day he took office. And I tell you, every single one of the media should have their heads hanging low out of disrespect for what they have done to President Trump since he became president. Not only is he the highest ranking government official in this country, but he deserves respect for the very fact that he is president. And the nothing attitude they take doesn't bring into even the slightest idea that President Trump was elected by us, by the voters. And we are the basket of deplorables that Hillary Clinton kept talking about before the presidency was completed with the election. And that's something the media forgets. The, they, they added, the attitude of the media is this. We simply voted for the wrong guy, and nobody is ever going to let President Trump get by with the American public making their decision as they did. And so they come up with lie after lie about who he is, and they try to create collusion about the Russians. And the only person who had collusion with the Russians, which the media never brings up, is Hillary Clinton's uh, dossier that she bought from the Russians about President Trump. And to this day, she was never held accountable for that. Nobody in the media has ever brought it up. Nobody in the media has ever condemned her for that. Nobody has ever condemned President Obama for giving uh, $150 billion to Iran, who then turned around and used it to help terrorist organizations, to help their nuclear program to continue creating uh, centrifuges that were used to uh, purify and enrich uranium, as well as plutonium. And getting back to who Jimmy Fallon really is, he is a communist stooge. There were very many people like that during the war between the Allies and Germany. And uh, I think most people, if you read history books when you were in school, knew that um, Adolf Hitler was a National Socialist. And that's what his party was called, the National Socialist Party of Germany. Now, what is socialism? It is an entirely substitute word for the word communism. And this is a kind of a no-no word in the democratic liberal side of government today. They do not want people hearing the word communism because they know it's exactly what they're practicing. It's what they're teaching to their constituents. It's what uh, Jimmy Fallon advocates on his TV show. I was thinking today on my way home to make this audio today that uh, I would think Jimmy Fallon is an absolute disgrace to Jay Leno, who probably is the one that chose him as his replacement. But Johnny Carson, 
is probably turning in his grave five, six hundred times a day when he hears what Phelan does uh, to President Trump's presidency. How he laughs him off, lies, creates uh, farce after farce, and uh, the American public by far represent the gay and the homosexual um, groups of this country. And they also have a very small percentage of what I call dope addicts, those who wanted Obama to legalize pot, marijuana, heroin, and he did. And Jimmy Fallon is, is advocating the same philosophy to his fans and to his audience because NBC is a mouthpiece for President Obama to this day. And I, uh, I, have I have to bring, bring this up in this video because it's the reason I decided to do this video. video. I've, I've asked, asked probably three, three, maybe four people who are in media, famous, famous people, people, uh, people who advocate Obama as being totally innocent of any I illegal thing he did, anything he did wrong, they have uh, exonerated him in their own minds. And this is what they all say. President Obama was great. That's verbatim. I've heard that from four different people who I, I've, I've written to. I wrote to Jimmy Fallon himself on his Facebook page after he did this skit about Obama was uh, the only true American uh, who did what was right for America. And President Trump is an idiot. He's this. He's that. And so I wrote back and I asked him, well, how come you exonerate Obama when he did the things he did that were illegal, like in Benghazi? The fact that he has given all this billions of dollars to the Iranians. He advocated for the Cuba communist regime uh, and giving them full uh, acknowledgement as a communist nation, giving them assistance with our own tax dollars. And I said, how can you advocate something like that when, when you know that Trump hasn't done any of that? And it's like it's either right or it's wrong. And now people see it opposite of what it really realistically is. Good is good and bad is bad. Now everybody says, oh, no, good is evil. Evil is good now. And that's why the only answer they can come up with when you ask them about what Obama did as president and why it was wrong and it was illegal, they say, Obama was great. And now I'm going to kind of help to reiterate this. They should not just say Obama was great. What they should be saying is, Obama is a great dictator because he still dictates to this world. And he's doing it through the media, through high-definition television. And people are blind. They don't care. They want to see only one thing. All of this brings up another subject that I recently saw on a, uh, a documentary. Back in the 70s, there was an ongoing movement on the push for yoga, uh, Hinduism, self-hypnosis. I'm tongue-tied. And... Uh, in the past uh, 40 years, you've started seeing these um, subjects being introduced into movies. They brought up uh, in this documentary about various things in Star Wars that had direct references to Hinduism. Uh, Hinduism is that uh, you are your own god, uh, that there is no supreme being that uh, created you. And uh, it's, it's a fascinating, fascinating video. video. It's uh, called, called The New Age Gods. And, and it was done, as I say, 40 years ago. And it is more relevant today than it even was when they released it. And to get back to, to who Jimmy Fallon really is, Jimmy Fallon is only continuing what Obama started in his socialism. And don't, and don't get that, that word confused with communism, communism because it's the same exact thing. thing. It's, it's just the government doesn't want you to say communism because they know it's a no-no word, it's evil, it's bad. 
that's, that's what, what your, your grandparents, grandparents and your parents, parents fought against uh, in the past 60 years to fight against what's evil in this country. And that was communism. And communism had a direct reference to the Soviet Union, Russia. Now, people hate Russia today, don't they? They say, oh, Russia's this and that. But they're always just tying it to Trump. But Trump isn't a socialist. Obama is a socialist, and he was a socialist, and he said that during his eight years as president. Socialism is what? What's the key word again? Communism. Who is a communist nation today? Cuba, China, Russia is a communist nation today. You know, because of Putin. Putin is a ex-KGB agent who continues to work for the same principles and the same outcome as Stalin did. Stalin wanted world control. Obama still wants world control, and that's what he's doing. And in the documentary, there was a mention of the fact that um, the United Nations is advocating any and all religious beliefs other than Christianity to be um, unified into one religion. Now, that was 40 years ago they were saying the unification of all religions into one central global religion. And Obama obviously has um, his eyes set at the global government system that he has begun. And where is it all going to be centered from? New York City at the United Nations. And if the United Nations, even in the 70s, was advocating a one-world religion, then it means that's still their intention. It's even more apparent today than it was. And... Every time you hear Jimmy Fallon making some hypocritical, absolute farce statement about President Trump, you should ask yourself, what is he really advocating when he makes these uh, accusations, these lies against President Trump? Why isn't anybody pointing fingers at Obama for the things he did? Because... In world history, and American history anyway, every time a president left office and the next man came in, they blamed the former president for the problems they've had, right? That is not true about Obama. Nobody has ever, since Trump became president, blamed Obama for anything. And Obama himself, who keeps a low profile, proves that his regime of socialists are still running the show. They are still the ones condemning and putting Trump down because they want to brainwash the rest of society who is smart enough to put President Trump in office to believing the lie that Obama started, which is socialism and communism, is the only true way for there to be peace in the world, uh, a utopia in the United States, but you see, when you have socialism and communism, something else dies in the process. It's called freedom. It's called capitalism. That means free enterprise. And the United States doesn't want free enterprise. They don't want capitalism. They want a dictator like Obama to run everything. Because that's why the potheads pushed Obama to make it legal for them to sell cannabis oil, to sell heroin, to sell methamphetamine, crack, every kind of drug is now so accessible. That's why on NBC every night they say, America overdosed. And why is it like that? They don't blame Obama, do they? They never say Obama did this. They blame Trump. They say Trump's not doing enough to stop this. They're not even looking at the real cause and effect of why it happened, and that's Obama himself. He made it legal, and nobody blames him. Nobody brings it up. Nobody says, oh, yeah, it's Obama who did all this. No, they don't say that. So Jimmy Fallon, in my, in my personal opinion, he's a douchebag because in his viewpoints about the subjects he talks about, he is never objective. He is never... Uh, open-minded, uh, if not um, unbiased about Trump and what he says. He just puts down Trump every day, laughs at him, puts him down, and says everything and anything the potheads in his audience want him to say because that's what they figure. We need ratings. 
Jimmy Fallon's got great ratings because he's saying exactly what Obama wants him to say. He's saying exactly what Hillary Clinton wants him to say and what the network itself wants him to say. And NBC is, without a doubt, Hillary Clinton and Obama's personal uh, spokesman because everything they've ever aired has been uh, derogatory towards President Trump. They have never been fair and impartial about what they've said about him. And why else would they want Jimmy Fallon to be the spokesman for a network late night show other than somebody who's going to slap President Trump down every single second they can, and they've been doing that. So I, uh, I want to end the video by saying this. When uh, 2012 came around, or 2015, this is like a year before the election. They did a special on uh, Back to the Future. They had Christopher Lloyd and they had Michael J. Fox on Jimmy Fallon's show. And the uh, result of that program, they posted it on YouTube. So I figured, well, maybe I'll do my own version. They hit me with a copyright strike because... I used only certain parts of it to do something like what probably would have been a sequel to Back to the Future. And ever since that happened, I thought, NBC doesn't want you to say things that are hypocritical about Phelan. They don't want you to even bring his name up to say that he's an idiot or he's a, he's a retard, he's a communist stooge. So now I'm responding to them hitting me with a copyright strike as well as saying exactly what Phelan's been doing at least for the past five years that he's been on network television. He says what he wants to say, and if anybody is contradictory to Phelan, he explodes just like the network explodes whenever you talk about something that they don't think you ought to be saying. Now, now, this, this is, is something else that's called thought crime. crime. This, this is, is something Obama started. If you, you think, think of something that the government, government don't think you ought to be thinking about, whether or not it's, it's dangerous, dangerous, whether or not it uh, results, results in any actual, actual behavior, behavior, because, because that's, that's the difference between behavior and thoughts. Thoughts, thoughts are opinions, opinions not actions. actions. And, and that's, that's why, why Obama said, well, we're not going to let you think a certain way anymore. That's why his wife, Michelle, kept telling people, you won't eat that anymore. You won't think that way anymore because we're telling you you can't. And that philosophy still stands strong with the Democrats. They don't want you saying things on YouTube that they don't agree with. And so they're going to say, nope, you can't talk that way anymore. So we're going to see what happens about my video about Jimmy Fallon. Is the government going to slap me down and say, oh, you've said copyright because now you're putting uh, Jimmy Fallon down because you're putting down what he's been saying about President Trump, who we hate? Or are they going to say, oh, well, you didn't use nothing copyright, so really we can't condemn you for this, for saying the things you've said. But we're going to look for every little thing in the video, and if we find something wrong, then we'll probably use copyright against you. And, and that's, that's the kind, kind of philosophy, philosophy our, our socialist, socialist communist government, government is using now. Thought crime. It's, it's also, also called profiling. There's, there's another word for that. It's called hazing, bullying. And only about two years, years ago, they, they said, we won't tolerate, tolerate people bullying, hazing, hazing profiling, profiling people. people. And, and yet, yet now, now it's exactly the opposite. The opposite. Now, now they, they are doing that to every American, American citizen. citizen. They don't only do it to children in school. Now they're doing it to just average people like you and me. They're saying, you can't say that. You can't think that anymore. You can't believe certain things. And that's why they're condemning Christians. And yet the Muslims who kill all the time and blow up people, oh, no, nothing wrong with Muslims who are killing people. We just don't have for Christians because we know what y'all really stand for, and that's Jesus Christ who is the Son of God, and they don't like that. They say, oh, no, 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 no. I'm like, really? Have we blown up anybody? Have we shot anybody? No. Do we just can't tolerate you uh, existing? But we'll allow the Muslims to exist and kill people and blow them up and torture them and all the rest. But uh, no, Christians are out of it. We won't allow that anymore. So who is it on the big, big profile here? Who is it actually that's standing for the government? Who is standing for Obama? Lucifer. Satan, the, the devil, devil, 
That's who's controlling all this, folks. In a nutshell, Satan controls Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon worships the devil because he worships Obama, and Obama is who? The son of perdition. He is the Muslim's Mahdi, and he is the Antichrist, who is mentioned in Revelation. And he's here. So please, folks, don't keep believing that Jimmy Fallon is some sort of an angel, some sort of a prophet, because he's none of the above. He's, he's demonically possessed by Obama and his communist studios. And he is a communist himself. And, and that's, that's why, why he puts, he puts down, down Trump. Trump. Thank, Thank you. you. rooms. A graduate of Harvard School of Divinity, Leland Stewart, directs the Unity and Diversity Council, a powerful New Age promotional network that originated with a 1965 directive of the United Nations General Assembly. Unity and Diversity Council is a worldwide coordinating body of what we call it individuals, organizations, and networks looking toward a time in which there will be a one single organized energy of networking throughout the planet. Under Stewart's leadership in 1982, this group linked arms with Graham Wilson's Mind Body Spirit Festivals, forming a vast army dedicated to the merger of all religions into one under a world leader. I am very interested in the harmony of all religions, not just to give birth to another religion, but rather to to produce let's call it a universal religious outlook through which there can be a new connecting of all cultures and all religions, all races. In this growing consciousness of sharing godliness and looking for a leader to uh, uh, lead everyone into this uh, new heaven, a one world government for one world leader and playing down and I believe myself correctly that the UN is not that world government that is a conditioning device that it is an aid a support system to meditate and be involved because this is part of the instruction of brainwashing and all this is part of the conditioning for the vision of a new world or of a new age. This guruistic system in politics is very dangerous for our democratic society. It will at least bring a loss of freedom, a loss of security, and a big danger for all mankind. More than ever before, the human race seems willing to surrender spiritually and emotionally to a charismatic leader who can offer peace and prosperity to a world trembling on the brink of ecological and social collapse, international financial chaos, and a nuclear holocaust. It's important to remember that all of the great religions await the coming of a teacher. The Christians await the return of the Christ, the Muslims await the Imam Mahdi, at the same time the Buddhists await the coming of another Buddha, the Hindus await the return of Krishna, and the Jews, as always, await the coming of the Messiah.
That day, the radio and the television networks of the world will be linked together. We shall see this extraordinary face on our television screens. That didn't go well. Somebody else made that happen. But he will not speak. His words will drop silently into our minds in our own language. My brain is loosened, and that allows another spirit being to interpose itself, begin to tick off the neurons in the brain, creating an entire universe of illusion. In this way, the world is being prepared for some. But without question, the stage is being set today for what the Bible calls the apostasy or man's abandonment of God. This climate is ushering in the final actor, the counterfeit, who the Bible predicts must come before the return of Jesus, the true Prince of Peace, who will then reign for a thousand years. The merger of science and mysticism is now in full blossom, and its evil fruit will be the new universal religion of the coming world dictator that the Bible identifies as the Antichrist. Breaking news and it's good news. And touches your heart. How do you even say thank you? Thank you is not big enough.